I do a little bit of talking today. In 2003, I ended my career with Norfolk Southern Railway after right at 35 years of working for him, I got hurt and had to take a medical retirement from the railroad. I sat around for a year, year and a half, trying to heal up, back and forth, physical therapy, trying to get my shoulder and everything back into shape. And there wasn't a lot to do. You couldn't go out and work. So I decided, I uh, this computer in the house, I'm going to learn what makes it tick. I'm going to learn the best I can on how to operate this computer. So I sat down, studied um, quite a bit on how to make my own website, which I did. Um, I own the domain Carnocker, carnocker.com. So I created this website. And you can get software to create websites with it. Uh, it'll do the code for you. Just type what you want in there and let their programs arrange how your page looks. But I wanted to know what makes it tick, so I sit down and learned how to do HTML codes. And started off with a very simple page, and each day I would add more to it until it got good enough that I could start telling some of my railroad stories, which I did. And it's not high class coding, I, there's plenty of coding that I don't even understand. But the point is, I was accomplishing something, I was learning something and creating my web page. That was in 2000, July of 2005. Well, I worked on that every day for, I spent hours working on carnocker.com. I want to check it out sometime. Nothing there, not a whole lot there, just a bunch of my railroad stories and some pictures. I worked on that for a couple of years. Around 2008, I got interested in YouTube. Well, I bought me a little JVC camera. My first videos was made with just a digital camera and it wasn't very good quality at all. But I, I began making YouTube videos and it wasn't long. I was making them pretty regular and just basically not doing a whole lot with my website at all. And I got so involved in learning to make videos, it was a whole process in itself. That was in 2008 when I started with YouTube. So I've been with YouTube quite a while. Went along, I made a YouTube partner, started producing videos on a regular basis. I did a lot of trained videos. And I'll still get out and do some real thin videos from time to time. A lot of my stories pertain to my days with the railroad. Uh, what, what brings this whole subject to mind is process of making videos. Around 2010, I hadn't been making videos a whole lot, but I was getting quite prolific at making train videos. And that JVC camera wasn't an HD camera, but it had an outstanding zoom on it. I still have the camera here. I made hundreds of videos with it. And I use a Sony Handycam, which is HD. Well, when you go out there, video on a train, or I got several of my videos where I videoed um, the railroad out there with a contractor putting traction motors in of some locomotives, and I wasn't exactly underfoot. You can't just go out there and get right up close to them and video what they're doing. I was pretty far off and I use my zoom quite a bit. When you're creating a video, it's not like you've got something to practice with and do takes and retakes. Whatever you video, that's what's going to be in your video. You, 
you can edit it to some extent, leave out some things. But you know what, I always do a perfect job of creating a video. But in the process of using my Zoom, I zoomed in quite a bit on this video, on this, on them locomotives. So you, my viewers, could see exactly what I was talking about when I was explaining what they were doing. If I just left the camera way off at a distance, you'd see them over there, but you wouldn't be able to see what they were doing. Well, I got a viewer here recently started critiquing my videos. You gotta remember, in 2010, I was still learning how to make videos. I wasn't a professional. And I still ain't a professional. I make mistakes every day to make that video. One of the first words out of this guy's mouth, and I noticed he don't make any videos, but he knows all about it. How I shouldn't play with it. GD Zoom. If I'd quit playing with the Zooms, several comments about me playing with the Zoom. Uh, I, never, I finally just told the guy, look, there's plenty of other videos out there you can watch. And you're perfectly welcome to go watch their videos. I don't, I won't miss you one little bit. So, over the years I've developed a certain style and I get pretty good at making some of my videos. But I make plenty of share, I share the mistakes when it comes to actually videoing something or doing the editing. You can always improve a video. But some of my videos that I made back then, I had quite a few mistakes in them, like the one with a locomotive. It's probably got a quarter of a million views. I don't remember what the count is. A lot of people watch that video. Actually, it was a whole series of videos. Because uh, it would have been way too long to create it all in one video. But my point is, uh, if you're going to critique somebody's video, you need to take that into consideration. The guy's doing the best he can to present his viewers with a video. And I create videos a lot. I'm certainly no expert at editing. And I don't mind constructive criticism. When somebody sees me doing something, I usually take it their advice into consideration and quite often I'll use their advice. But when you want to go to bad mouth and me and like you're some kind of expert, I don't make my viewers watch my video. You're perfectly welcome to go somewhere else, my friend. Anyway, this guy went, went around and critiqued several of my old videos like that. Well, I guess it gives him some kind of power to, you know, hindsight is 2020, foresight ain't 2020. I'll continue to make my videos the best I know how, and I definitely appreciate all my viewers' support when they watch them. But, and I'll, welcome any constructive criticism you have out there. If you want to rain on my parade, go somewhere else. You don't hurt my feelings one little bit to go watch someone else's videos. Some people get on there and video a train and stick some music in there. Quite often it'll be music that's not, that's copyrighted. If you use somebody else's music without permission in your video, um, they have a right to take your video off the air. They can also post commercials or ads on your video that they get paid for. I quite often will use music in my videos. But, um, if my videos are monetized, you can bet your bottom dollar the music that I use in my video is something that was I was allowed to use. It was free download. But I do the best I can with my videos and this video here is getting to be quite drawn out. 
Sure is a pretty day today. Anyway, if you like my videos, there's a place down there you can subscribe. Be sure to click the bell uh, so you'll be notified when I post a video. Uh, doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. And if you click notify, you'll get an email saying, Walter just made a video. I've been doing quite a bit of vlogs this winter. Need to get back on some of my projects. Well, let's cut this video short, but we'll continue this vlog in another day. And, uh, appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for listening.